Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of skateboarding around looking for snakes. This area has had a lot of rain recently and uh, today was really the first hot day that it didn't rain. It wasn't even particularly hot. You can see the ground is still pretty wet but I'm going to be cruising around in this swampy habitat on the electric skateboard today hoping to see some snakes namely a mud snake that's the big thing that i really want to see out here and the whole reason i have this board to begin with because this habitat is best accessed on these trails brother the trail is not a good place for you <laughs> oh we're on the board nice eastern box turtle is our first find this is actually not something i see out here very often at all in fact i think this is the first one i've ever found walking these paths so now that I'm able to drive these paths, it goes a little bit faster and it only makes sense that I would start finding them, but really cool either way. Nice, healthy adult Eastern box turtle. We're just going to make sure, I think this is a she, we're going to make sure she gets off the path and we're going to keep cruising. But first find pretty quickly, a nice Eastern box turtle. All right, well, we just cruised a nice little juvenile copperhead. Look at that guy. Well, that is a pretty good first snake of the day on the trail. Hopefully not the last, but the first one of these little guys that I have actually managed to cruise on the skateboard. Um, previously, I had only cruised common snakes, like little brown snakes. Not that copperheads aren't common. They're just not quite as common as the ubiquitous things like brown snakes, ring necks, stuff like that that we normally see. But really pretty little guy. He's still got that bright yellow tail and he's he's basically obese. I mean, he's super fat. I'm assuming he is, oop, getting a little grumpy, but I'm assuming he is eating pretty well around here. It's starting to get dark on us, so don't go into my backpack, please. All right, now we've got a situation. Move this out of the way because there's a cart coming. And we're gonna, there he is. That is so cool. A really beautiful little snake, but we're going to make sure he gets off in the direction he was heading and get back to it. But stuff is moving. This is a good sign, hopefully. We're going to keep cruising, and hopefully there will be more to come. All right, it's getting to be that time of day. It's kind of cooling off a little bit. The sun's going behind the trees, and it's going to be getting dark soon. So if we're going to see anything else, I would expect it's probably going to happen in the next hour or so. Then we might go shine around a little bit. We'll see. All right, I just shined our next snake of the night. Don't know how close I'm going to be able to get to him. But right there in the water is a Midland water snake. I'll see if I can get hands on him real quick before he gets away, and I'll get a closer look at him. Well, he did exactly what I was worried he would do, and backed straight down a crayfish hole, <laughs> and I wasn't able to catch him. But snakes are out. This is the second snake we've seen in the last 30 minutes or so. My board's at about half power right now, so hopefully we'll have enough battery to do a couple more passes here. There goes a beaver. Terrible lighting, but <laughs> that's kind of interesting to just see one swimming by like that. This is the same box turtle we found like several hours ago, and she's now trying to nest on the side of the road. I mean... <laughs> I'm kind of conflicted on whether or not to mess with her because it is kind of quiet out right now. But at the same time, I don't want to risk the one asshole coming along and running her over even though she's not on the road. But I think I'm going to leave her to it, try not to disturb her and just let her do her thing because she is off the side of the road. And hopefully by the time she's done, there won't be anybody out here. So really interesting either way to see this turtle twice, both in the same little spot. I moved her out of the road that way earlier, and now she's back on this side uh, trying to dig a nest. So we're going to leave her to it, I guess. Well, it's not a snake, but it's kind of interesting. A nice little gray tree frog here crossing the path. I've seen a couple of either American or Fowler's toads. I'm not sure which. And uh, a couple of these guys so far since it's gotten dark, but no more snakes yet. Either way, this guy's really handsome, almost looks like a bird voice tree frog, although if there were bird voice tree frogs here, I would know because they'd be calling everywhere. And I have never heard them here, so I think this is just a really interesting looking gray tree frog. But either way, really nice looking little guy. In the background there, you can, oop, there he goes. In the background there, you can hear green tree frog calling, so maybe we'll see some of those out here too. But nice looking gray tree frog. 
Vermont has been pretty quiet out here so far after dark. I saw a freshly run over red-bellied snake, and that has been it for snakes since the, uh, I guess the Midland water snake was shined. Um, the board's getting pretty low though at this point, so I might be calling it quits here soon. Oh, a salamander. <laughs> While I was talking. Just hanging out in the dry road, a nice southern two-line salamander. <laughs> That's really weird, but I'll take it. I've been out here on wet nights where these things are absolutely everywhere. It's hard not stepping on them, they're so common. So I'd imagine if we came out here on a wet night, we wouldn't even need the board. We could just walk and we'd be seeing dozens and dozens of these guys. They're so common out here, it's crazy. But really nice looking salamander. We don't see these guys as commonly in the summertime as we do in the winter, so... It's a decent find. But with that being said, if it was raining, I guarantee you we'd be seeing them at left and right. So nothing crazy, but a nice, oh, <laughs> nothing crazy, but a nice addition to the biodiversity for the night. All right, now here's something really cool. I just shined this guy way up at the top of a tree. It took me forever to get him down, but this is a barking tree frog, probably the rarest tree frog we have in this part of Metro Atlanta. These guys do not seem to do as well with development as all the other tree frogs that you hear calling, Cope's Grays back there, and Greens that you heard earlier. And really, this might be the closest to Atlanta you can even find these frogs. And this one is beautiful, has a really cool bright yellow chin. I've never seen one with that yellow like that. Normally it's kind of just a whitish color, but that thing is absolutely gorgeous. All right, I got the video light, which is, by the way, just my flashlight stuck into my flash diffuser at this point in time. And he looks a lot better in this lighting. You can kind of see just how beautiful this thing is. Look at that yellow coloration along the flank. Really, really cool. He's pretty much just chilling though. Really beautiful frog. Doesn't even really look like something that belongs here. They look very exotic to me compared to our other native tree frogs which we have a lot of really cool looking native tree frogs too. But for some reason, these guys just seem the most alien to me. Maybe it's their size. They get probably a solid 50% bigger than the average adult green tree frog. But this one is fairly small. So anyways, really, really awesome frogs. One of my local favorites and something that I've only ever seen one of here before. So this is a pretty big find for me. But beautiful barking tree frog here in Metro Atlanta. Probably the highlight of the day for me, honestly. And he is going straight back up. Really, really cool. These guys like to hang out much higher in the trees than the other tree frogs, it seems. Really, really awesome. But well, we're just gonna leave them to it and cruise our way back to the car because the board only has one tick of battery life left. Hopefully we'll see some more stuff between here and the car. I'm probably gonna come back out here tomorrow because this has been pretty fun and fairly productive and gas is $5 a gallon, so I don't really feel like road cruising. I might do a little bit of day cruising tomorrow, but I do think I'm gonna end up coming back out here after dark. All right, guys, it is the heat of the day the next day, and I am out at some friend's property exploring, and we're pulling into the driveway, and they slam on brakes because this big guy is crossing their driveway. Very nice, healthy adult rat snake to start the day. Super dark. We're in the eastern Piedmont today where it's a little bit more uh, of normal black rat snake influence, so you don't get the gray rat influence. Pretty much just solid black rats around here. Really cool looking snake. You can see his pattern is kind of visible through the black, but largely a solid colored snake. Really, really cool. So how long have you been living here and you haven't seen a snake yet until today? Like six months. Six months. <laughs> and we're just on our way in to see the property and they slam on brakes in the whatever you call this thing, because this guy's in the road. But big, beautiful, healthy black rat snake. It's our first snake of the day. All right, bud. <laughs> Off you go. He just wants to hold on to my arm now. Go on. There he goes. He's so long. He's like super slender for how long he is. So there's another one up here. Look at this. This one's even bigger. <laughs> We're just having a rat snake party out here, I guess. So we, we had not moved. Like we, we moved like 10 feet. 
spotted she it. She spotted it. She said, no, that's not another one. <laughs> and sure enough, it was another one. An even bigger one. So this guy is maybe a little bit longer, but just a much girthier snake. I think it's probably an older snake. And that other one was young. But look how heavily, heavily keeled the scales on this guy are. All right, rat snake number two for the day. Five minutes after the first one. I haven't even been here 10 minutes total and we've already gotten two snakes. So we're just gonna let her crawl off. There's a worm snake. Got it. Big worm snake. All right, well that is a fat, healthy Eastern worm snake is our next find. Likely gravid, so we're not gonna mess with her too much. She is super thick, super healthy looking. And I'm assuming she's gonna lay her eggs under this board, so we'll just let her go right back under. Look at that fat end. <laughs> All right, so we've got a couple turtles here that we're going to release into the creek that were stuck in their in-ground pool. This guy is a mud turtle of some sort, either an eastern or a striped mud, but really pretty face on this guy. Just good-looking turtle all around. And since he's been in a pool instead of a creek, he's uh, nice and clean, not covered in a lot of mud or moss. Normally when we see these guys, they are more mud than they are turtle. So it's nice to see one that's really clean like this. But he's basically been a pet living in their pool where he was stuck for however long this guy's been in there so i'm sure he'll be happy to get back to the creek well it's working out kind of well now now he's got his footing all right and next up we have eight baby yellow-bellied sliders these guys were all also stuck in the pool so they're going to be going to the creek where they can disperse to wherever they want so we're going to let them go Wee. <laughs> Go on, boys. <laughs> this guy's got the right idea. There he goes. All right. There. <laughs> there he goes. He's getting his footing now. All right, you two are the last ones. Take off. All right, well, here's another little worm snake. Also in shed, this is the time of year where a lot of snakes are going into their second shed cycle of the year especially ones that are gonna have eggs, but nice little worm snake, 2.0. All right, we're back at board cruising. It was a pretty nice uh, afternoon out at my buddy's place. Shout out to Cameron, thanks for letting us look around. We found some cool stuff, but now we're gonna be out board cruising where we were yesterday, so let's see what we can turn up. All right, it's just starting to get dark enough that uh, I can see with my flashlight. Got the GoPro running. We'll run it for a little bit tonight and see if we can catch anything, but yeah. It's going to be getting dark here shortly, so hopefully, if we're going to see any snakes tonight, it will come pretty soon. Dang. I think that car just hit that guy. There's a great tree frog. Get out the path. Dang. Super fresh DOR. Still kind of alive a little bit. He might actually be all right. He's barely hit on the head. That sucks. There we go. Little baby copperhead in the same spot we found one the other night. Well, yeah, there we go. Little baby copperhead is our first live snake of the night. Unfortunately, we did have that Midland water snake that had just been squished, but snakes are moving. So I'm just gonna escort this guy off the path and we're gonna keep hoping for that mud. But we've been doing pretty well out here the last couple of days. I'm not, not upset at all. Just seeing snakes out here, even if we're not finding our big target, which is the mud snake, it's still nice to just be road cruising snakes for free. <laughs> Especially considering how expensive gas is right now. A really good looking little guy. This guy's also got the sulfur tail. I'm pretty sure this one's significantly smaller, just so you can see kind of scale. Obviously, I'm not gonna put my foot any closer than that, but good looking snake nonetheless. We'll get him out of the path and keep cruising. These rocks right here must be a pretty good spot for copperheads. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this area. 
and see if we can find a gravid female hanging out in the fall. But really cool. Decent first snake of the night. We're gonna keep moving. There's a Midland. Look at that guy. All right, stop the shine a little bit. There's a nice Midland water snake hanging out on the bottom of this pool. There's tons of tree frogs calling in here and it's nice and clear. So I'm gonna shine around here for a little bit and hopefully we'll be able to see a few more snakes out foraging. But nice Midland water snake is our first find at this little pond. I'm just gonna leave him right there and get back to shining. All right, guys, just made a really nice grab on three Nerodia. Here's two of them. These are both Midland water snakes. We've got the really nice red face here. I spotted this guy from the bridge, ran down to catch him and found him and two more water snakes. One of them's brown water. I've got the brown water in my bag at the moment just so I can show you these guys because I've got too many snakes and only so many arms. So here's these two. I'm gonna release the normal looking one real quick and then we'll get a better look at this more reddish colored guy. But there's a normal Midland water, and then the really red guy next to him. All right, here's a look at this more vibrant snake now that I let the normal one go and can actually kind of hold my flashlight with one hand. But I definitely need to get a better headlamp situation so that I can actually have a light on my head and not have to worry about holding the flashlight with my knees like I am now. Well, my knee idea didn't work very well because I lost the Midland right after <laughs> I said that, but here is the little brown water snake I caught. You can see he's got a much different looking facial structure and really just overall body shape than the Midlands. He's a lot more stout and these guys get a lot bigger when they're fully grown too, over five feet in length. One of the biggest water snakes in the U.S. But you can see just a much different looking snake, really, really cool. And this is a juvenile, probably only about a year old. But yeah, I got into more snakes in this one little area here than I've seen pretty much all day. But I'm just gonna let this guy go back into the creek. We'll probably see some more of these tonight. And if not, we've seen plenty of them on the channel before. So I'm just gonna let this guy go. But beautiful little brown water snake and two more Midlands at this spot. This is kind of neat. That is a big Nerodia shed. I'm assuming a Nerodia. Could be a cottonmouth. But big shed just flowing in the water here. That thing is super blue. Really cool looking. All right guys, well I'm gonna start making my way back at this point. It's been decent. It seems like snakes were pretty active in the water. We just didn't see too much crossing the trail. Just the one copperhead and then the one water snake that got ran over. I've also seen a couple of DOR brown snakes, but other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Anyways, I think I have enough for a full video now. So thank you all so much for watching. Uh, probably only one or two more Georgia episodes, if that, before we head west for a couple of weeks. So hopefully y'all enjoyed the board cruising. It's definitely different from anything I've ever done before. So I know I got a lot of good feedback on the first board cruising video. So we're gonna be doing this quite a bit, hopefully, at least while gas is expensive. So yeah, if I see anything else between here and the car, great. And if not, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Thank you all so much for watching.